No, no, no. You know what really grinds my gears? Improper gear mesh on this TRX-6, I think. It was a little noisy in the last video, if you saw it, and I just kind of went along with it, and I could definitely tell that the X system that was installed when I purchased this wasn't as smooth as I thought it should be. I certainly hear people loving the smoothness of them and how it is smoother than any other system on the market, and it definitely was not, which told me more than likely there was some problems with the gear mesh, because even the best system, when it's set up improper, won't work as intended. So. Today, what I am going to do is attempt to change the gear mesh on this and see what's up, why this thing is so noisy, and hopefully we will fix it. All right, so on this one, there is a magnetic removable bed, and now we can pretty much get to everything. I am hoping we can get to the gear mesh on here as well, but it looks like we have ourselves some sort of metal plate. Some sort of metal plate. Oh dear, this isn't going to be an easy one at all. I thought this would be a quick, quick fix. And it looks like yeah, there's going to be a little, there's going to be a little work to get to what we need to get to. Mmm. All right. So first things first, we got a metal plate where all the electronics are housed. And it looks like it is uh, held on with two screws. So let's take these screws off and see what happens. It's always the best part about working on custom projects is you never know what you're going to find. Well, at least if you didn't do the work yourself. All right, so we've got a screw under here that is going through those little skid plates, side plates, whatever they are. Maybe you can tell me. So we take these screws off and hopefully the entire electronics plate will lift off and show us access to our beautiful spur cover. And while I'm not very fond of the system that Traxxas used for calculating where your gear position should be, you know, if you got a 13 tooth pinion and a whatever tooth spur, then you go in, you know, A slot or whatever. I'm not really fond of that. However, it can be tricky to set a gear mesh, especially in a system like this where you can't really get to it or see it. So I can understand why they did it. It also seems to be a little bit more foolproof for the newbies. And that is A-OK -okay with me. All right, so let's see if I can get this sucker out. Oh boy, she's just... There's wires everywhere. It's being held in by wires in every single direction. So I'll just have to move it to the side. All right, so what do we got here? We got to axe... We got to axe somebody. Uh, 3,300 kV motor. It wasn't going 3,300 kV fast. I can tell you that right now, which tells me it was probably getting overloaded by a bad pinion mesh because the X isn't the most powerful system. And I know, I know, it's a competitor against me, so of course I'm going to be very critical of it. However, for the size, and of course having the staggered magnet in particular, uh, it, it's just underpowered for the size of the motor and the heft of the system. Uh, so on this uh, 550 length, you know, they've got, I haven't opened this one up, but if I recall correctly, it's like a 24 millimeter long rotor, 25 millimeter long rotor, the magnets and the stator. And that, that's the same as my Polar Pro standard 540, essentially. But because of the staggered magnets that they have on there, the peak torque of the motor goes way down, especially with how much stagger they got. And theirs was done that way so that they could have a really smooth startup using FOC and using FOC with essentially like a dumb sine wave. So they work backwards. I'm assuming this is just me assuming as an engineer that they work backwards by engineering a motor with a sine wave back EMF to fit the sine wave of the uh, ST spin, essentially, it's, a, it's an ST chip, where they give you all the resources to do FOC. So um, if you don't want to modify their code, then 
you essentially have to make a motor to fit it. But there are methods to use FOC with a non sine wave motor. Um, sometimes we would call them an AC motor. If it has a sine wave back EMF, we would call it an AC motor, even though it's actually run by DC voltage. But a, a DC brushless motor would have more of a, a square wave back EMF. And typically you wouldn't drive that with FOC because it's a plenty efficient to drive it with six step commutation. All right, is there a third screw? Oh, there must be a third screw. Oh, uh, let's see, where was I ranting about motors? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, square wave commutation, regular six step is typically used on DC brushed or brushless motors, I'm, I mean, because they have a square wave back EMF and six step driving is essentially just a square wave and it is as efficient as you really need. FOC at high speeds can give you the t just a teeny little edge. You can also do fancy stuff with FOC. They, they don't on this system, but uh, more robust feature rich FOC you can do this thing called field weakening, which is essentially like timing changes, not a timing advancement. However, you use amp draw. Instead of just a blind timing advancement, you use amp draw to adjust timing. All right. Oh, aftermarket motor plate. Yeah, so all bets are off on this guy. Aftermarket motor plate, um, looks like a, is that a metal spur? Boo metal spur. Oh, no, that might that might be that might be plastic. Yeah, that's plastic spur. Good, good, good. All right, so we are using. Oh, this is a five millimeter shaft. One, two. Uh, we'll just count the teeth. It doesn't have it listed on there. There we are. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a twelve tooth pinion. That is indeed. All right, so what position should a, should a 12 tooth pinion be in? Let's look on the good old interwebs. TRX for gear mesh. Uh, it should be with a 12 tooth pinion in the D position. And what are we in? We're in the C position. Of course it was a bad gear mesh. Sometimes I wonder, you know, uh, when I heard this rolling, I could tell that there was something wrong, but I always, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, no, 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 it's, it's probably fine. Your senses aren't that good that you could simply hear that the gearing mesh was wrong, but the gearing mesh was wrong. I was right. I suppose when you've done this for decades and you have four TRX fours in your stable, maybe, maybe we, can learn these things as just kind of intuition that wow indeed just needed a little just needed a little love on the gear mesh so my apologies to whoever i bought this from i cannot remember your name besides this one thing it seems to be a super awesome rig and now, yes, now it's going in smoothly. Now what we can do is really see how good this Axe Low Speed Control is. Because I have not used them since the latest firmware updates. And I know, at least I've been told, that they made them much smoother, especially after seeing my slightly harsh video on how, well, there's a lot of systems that are just as smooth. So... What are you doing with your FOC? Well, with FOC, uh, or really any ESC to tell you the truth, but with FOC, there's a lot of leeway for tuning. So they were able to essentially say, hey, you just start up at a slower RPM. And because of the staggered magnet, the natural startup speed of this motor is actually gonna be lower. But as I said, it's always gonna be a trade-off of torque density when you do that. Um, there is a point where you can make a motor too smooth and you're losing out on what it should be. At least in my opinion, as a motor designer, this is certainly subject to opinions, but, uh, and you can also go in the other direction by making a motor too torque dense. Typically it's going to have poor startup. Now with brushless motors, we can essentially fix that 
via software on the controllers in many different ways. And FOC does give more options. But even if it has a square wave back EMF, FOC can be used to give a slower, more controlled startup because it is torque vectoring. Uh, at least that is the ideal field oriented control. You are controlling the amperage and the position of the amperage, if you will, in relation to your back EMF, in relation to the field of the motor. And so it gives you the ability to essentially micro step a motor using FOC because instead of only switching two wires at a time with FOC, you're switching all three. Uh, and so it's similar to, to stepping motors, but not really. And this is totally not what I meant to talk about for this video. I don't know how I got on a rant about motors and controller design, but uh, I guess seeing that, that Axe FOC in there and wondering how good is it gonna be now? All right, all right, all right. So before I go any further, I'm gonna throw a battery in here, just make sure that it is actually smoother on the bench. All right, old uh, slightly puffy battery that I think was the one we were using in the last video when it wouldn't quite function properly, but I'm not going fast, so it's no big deal. No biggie. All right, 11.8 volts. That's terrible for a pack to be sitting there on all right are we in first gear second oh that's still noisy but that's a lot smoother i think there we go there's first gear oh hey and spider's coming out nice eh. i might have to update the the firmware on this guy um because that's not great for first gear, in my opinion. Yeah, I'll see if this one needs some firmware. I mean, while we're doing it, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's see if I still have the hobby wing, but this is definitely smoother than it was. Let's see how our reverse is. Yeah, it's, it's smoother than it was. And for a 3300 KV, it's not, that's not bad. That's not bad. And it's got the old uh, uh, velocity loop on there. So once it's moving, it doesn't take any throttle uh, finessing to keep it moving, which that's, uh, it's got the upsides and downsides. You lose torque control, of course, but you gain the ability to essentially, uh, let's see if I can do this proper. All right, set. Uh, that didn't work. Set. That still didn't work. Oh, oh. Set. Didn't work. Set. There we go. Now, I have the cruise control set, and we're just going to use the multifunction knob. Let's see how slow can she go. Any time now. Aha! That's our minimum speed. Yeah, this must be an old version of firmware because that's not great it's not bad either i mean don't get me wrong that is not bad that would definitely work esc connecting hey, it's nice it uh you know i don't have to reset it that's nice uh it says that our reverse is half speed of forward so let's just double check that's why it wasn't fast enough this guy was set up in the wrong direction scroll 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 100% max reverse force, turbo timing, no nope. turbo delay, nope, drag brake force, yeah, sure, 80%. Drag brake increase rate, I think that's a ramp, level four, sure, we'll stay there. Neutral range, 10%, sure. Throttle increase rate, level five. BEC voltage, motor rotation, haha. -ha. There we go. KV rating, 2300. This is, yeah, it's a 3300. That's uh, strange. Oh well, oh well, okay. Uh, we will save this firmware complete. It seems like the low speed control may be a little better. Now, let's see. Still faster in reverse. Yep, 
still faster in reverse. Reverse, we go to 100. Okie dokie. Turn back on again. Sounds about right. Now our voltage is dropping. You can probably see it. Uh, that's good, one good way to test a bad battery is to have a voltmeter on there. Oh, 10 volts. Oh, what a sad, sad pack. Now let's see how our low speed control is. Uh, it's still a little touchy, but I think even for 3300, I'm, I suppose that's not bad. First gear though. Yeah. yeah, I'll do a little bit more tuning. I think that's a lot better than at least what we had. I'll go ahead and button this up the rest of the way, install those two screws, and we will be able to go on a ride. But we'll leave that for another day. If you do have any questions about this, then leave your comments down below. If you want to rip me a new one for being hard on Hobby Wing, then please do let me know your thoughts. As always, thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.